Okay, so I'm going to be looking at question four of the 2018 May AS Paper 1 Physics for AQA. Figure one shows a uniform beam supported by two cables, uh, two light cables, AB and AC, AB, AC, which are attached to a single steel cable from a crane, single steel cable from a crane. The beam is stationary and in equilibrium, okay? State two necessary conditions for equilibrium, for the beam to be in equilibrium. Right, this is two free marks, right? Uh, all you need to do is remember the conditions for equilibrium. So condition number one, is condition number one is uh, that no resultant forces are acting so I will just say there are no resultant forces acting there are no resultant forces acting okay <clears throat> so what does that actually mean if you've got an object like this and it's balanced say here you have a force up a force down um, this actually does meet this condition if these forces are equal in magnitude because they're going to cancel each other out forces up and forces down right so that's what we mean by this but it wouldn't meet the second condition so let's look at the second condition and that is that this the if I say this the moments clockwise equal the moments anti-clockwise most students think ah oh, that's it but it's not it's the sum if you don't say sum you're not gonna get the marks the sum because there could be more than one moment turning this thing in the direction of the clock right um, uh, so that there could be more than one moment. So you have to say the sum of the moments. So if you were to count the moments on this example, you've got one, two, and three things causing this thing to turn at three moments. So you have to consider all the moments. The sum of the moments clockwise will be equal to the sum of the moments anti-clockwise okay you're ever solving problems on this it's always uh, you know you start with writing that statement quite often um, so you might write anti-clockwise or clockwise anti-clockwise moments or the sum of the anti-clockwise moments equals the sum of the clockwise moments and then you can start solving from there so <clears throat> just to remind yourself you must have that bit in there you must have the sum bit Next, state what is meant by center of mass. Okay, so if you throw an object, this pen, right, as it flies through the air, uh, it looks like it takes a really confusing path, but if you watch the center of mass, it takes a simple parabolic uh, curve. It simplifies things a lot to be able to treat an object as though all of its mass acts from a single point. It doesn't really act from a single point, it's an imaginary point. Um, so we say it is the, uh, the position or the, yeah, the position on an object where the mass appears to act from. Okay, hopefully I have got the mark. I'm going to check the mark scheme. If I've made a mistake, I'll leave it in. But I, this is a definition you have to remember. And they're a bit funny about getting it perfectly right. So I'll put the uh, mark scheme up after I've finished. <clears throat> okay, explain why the center of mass of the beam must be vertically below A. Why must the center of mass be here? Right. So when we're talking about center of mass, if I get a beam right and if its mass is uniformly distributed it's a homogeneous material so it is of an even thickness and an even density throughout its center of mass would be right in the center of the object okay and I should be able to get a single pin like a drawing pin and put, place it like this and have this beam balancing on top of it right if I was to place the beam on the pin here and try to balance it then the center of mass would be pulling down this way and creating a turning moment and uh, the thing would not be in equilibrium. So the only way this thing can be in equilibrium if the is if the center of mass is directly below the support, right? So there's the support, right? If the center of mass was not directly beneath this, then you would have a turning mo moment and the object would be uh, would not be in equilibrium. So that's what I'm going to write. Right. Um, uh, if center of mass causes a turning moment would cause when I said a turning moment I suppose it's a net turning moment if it were not 
Turn around the glow. The uh, point A. Full stop. The beam would not be in equilibrium. Therefore, not be in equilibrium. And if you did um, try to hang an object, so I could I could give you an example here. Here's a here is a, a letter. Okay. Now, if I uh, if I hold it here, right. Um, and allow it to move freely, it will rock about, it won't be in equilibrium um, initially, it's rocking around and then it will settle and the centre of mass will, will be directly beneath where I'm hanging it, right? If I hang it again from a different position, again the minute I let go of it now you can see that the centre of mass is pulling this object around and um, it's going to be not be in equilibrium, rock around a bit until it settles and the centre of mass will be directly beneath my finger again. And this is one of the ways of finding the centre of mass of an object. You can hang it, uh, hang a plumb line directly down, draw a line, hang it from another position, um, allow it to move freely, draw a plumb line directly down, and where these two lines intersect, you can say that's where the centre of mass will be uh, on, on that two-dimensional object. Okay, next bit. <clears throat> the weight of the beam is 12,000 newtons. Calculate the tension T1 in cable E and the, can, uh, the tension T2 in cable AC. Right, so we need to go back to this diagram. Well, I think this is quite tough, but it is solvable, 100%. So it's a vectors problem we're, we're looking at here, okay? Um, we're being told that the, the beam is 12,000 newtons, right? This beam is pulling directly down, let's do this in a different color, This beam is pulling directly down with 12,000 newtons, right? Which means that this steel cable must be pulling directly up with 12,000 newtons, Newton's third law. Um, um, so that's quite interesting, right? Now, this thing's in equilibrium, so there must be no um, net forces on the object. They must all add up to zero, which means that the tension in this cable, right, which is going to be depending on which way you look at it you could think of the tension is uh, countering this upward force pulling down this way and you've got the tension this way right they labeled them didn't they they said they were T1 and T2 so T1 was in AB that's T1 and that makes this one T2 all three forces must add up to um, to zero right so that means, how can you walk 10 meters and 10 meters and 10 meters and have gone nowhere? If you walk 10 meters this way, 10 meters this way, and 10 meters this way, you can have a displacement of zero. So this is what we're going to try and do. We're going to try and make a closed triangle after these three forces and analyze the situation that way. So I'll do my diagram here. So I've got this to refer to. So I'm going to imagine the 12,000 newtons is pulling straight up. T2 is here. Okay, and you've got T1 this way. Okay, now I've got the issue, sorry, T1, the issue of trying to uh, get the angle information over here correctly as well. Okay, okay, so I've got this diagram. Let's try and think about the angles and how all that works. So that is there, that is there. Okay, that looks right. So that makes this a right angle. Okay, so here is my right angle. Right, took a bit of work that did, 12,000 newtons. Okay, so that looks correct now. Right, I can see that the right angle must be here because um, T1 and T2 form a right angle with each other. Wherever I put T2 along this line or T1 along this line, they must have a right angle between them. And then your 12,000 newtons will be here. Right. So then the rest of the angles must be what? Well, the angle T1 makes with the vertical is 53. So this is 53. And the angle that um, T2 makes with the vertical this way is, oh, is 37, right? 37. That's 37. <clears throat> there, right? So what does that mean? If that angle there is 37, Right, that means that angle there is 37. I want to find this angle inside. Or do I need the angle inside? No, I don't. I can just work from this angle alone. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse.
that's the opposite and that's the adjacent. I'm going to use a different color again. I'm going to start doing a calculation now. Let's go with that one. Right, so the hypotenuse of this triangle is this side, the adjacent side is this side, and the opposite is this side, right? So <clears throat> I need to find, let's say I try to find T1 first. So T1, okay? Um, it's a bit light, isn't it? Let's do T1 first. Right, T1. So I have got the hypotenuse, and I want to find the adjacent. So A and H, so Selly Oak Hospital can always handle the odd accident. I'm using that, cos, A and H. So T1 will be equal to cos um, A over H. So I'm going to bring the H up. So it'll be 12,000 cos 53. That should be equal to T1. And T2, which will be here, I'll be using the opposite side. I'm trying to find the opposite side and I'm using the hypotenuse. So I'm using sine. So T2 should be equal to 12,000 sine 53. Okay, so I will go and uh, take that. the next page gosh it goes on all right <clears throat> the steel cable from the crane has a circular cross-section of diameter 1.5 to the 1.5 times 10 to the 2 minus 2 meters sorry the cable is 12 meters long calculate the extension of the cable caused by the weight of the beam you can assume that the weights of all the cables are negligible right calculate the extension okay calculate the extension uh, okay so on my equation sheet I'm going to be using, come on, I'm going to be using Young's modulus equals stress over strain, where stress is defined as force over area, and strain is defined as change in length over original length. Right, so let's go back to this. So it is Young's modulus, whatever you want to, symbol you want to use for that, is stress over strain. That doesn't really help, does it? Stress over strain. Stress is force over area, so it's going to be equal to force over area over change in length over original length. I'm going to tidy this up a bit. I'm going to bring the bottom up and invert it. So it becomes force over area times by this inverted, which will be length over change in length. Okay, So I'll be using this formula, FL over AL. Right. So I know the force is 12,000, right? The force is 12, 1, 2, 3. I know the length. The cable is 12 meters long. I know, uh, oh, I don't know the area. I've been given the diameter, right? So to work out the cross-sectional area, I would need to do pi r squared. Pi r, so that's 0 0.75, half of that, that's the diameter, 0 0.75, times 10 to the minus 2, this needs to be squared, by r squared, so that's the area, times by the extension, and all of this is equal to Young's modulus, 2 times 10 to the 11. I've been a bit dumb here and not rearranged for e first, it's probably been really helpful to have rearranged for e, or the, sorry, the uh, change in length, e, change in length, same thing. Uh, so let me just quickly do that. Um, let's go from here. So Young's modulus is F L over A over A delta L. Okay, so I want delta L um, times both sides by delta L. So delta L times Young's modulus equals F L over A. Divide both sides by Young's modulus gets me to this times by 1 over Young's modulus. Right, so um, I just simply am going to do 
so that's gone. I'm going to simply do a uh, switch between these two things. So I'm going to do 12,000 times 12 over pi, 0.75 times 10 to the minus 2 squared times Young's modulus 2 times 10 to the 11. Again, this should give me the extension. <laughs> right, loads of powers and things to get wrong here. 1, 2, 0, 0 times 12 divided by, opening up brackets, pi times 0.75 to the minus 2 squared times 2 to the power of 11. Close brackets finally. <laughs> ah, it's too much. I'll do it shorter. 1, 2, 0, 0, 0 times 12. 1, 4, 4, 0, 0, 0, over. Right, let's work all this out. Uh, 0.75 to the power of minus 2 squared times 2 to the power of 11 times pi. Right, that's all over this. 3, 5, 3, 4, 2, 9, 1, 7, point three, five. Point three, five, right? Right, so 1, 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, divided by the answer to that. So I'm getting an answer of 4 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, so that's 4 millimeters extension. 4 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, hopefully I got that right. Um, quite a tough question. Definitely a, a tough one. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. Any comments, any suggestions would be appreciated. Uh, again, thanks for watching.